everybody. We're here today to talk about adding fractions with different denominators using different types of models. So we're going to start by drawing tape diagrams and then drawing number, set, or number lines because we know that not every strategy works for everyone. So we're going to try a couple different ones so we can figure out which one works for us. There is a couple of vocabulary words that we do need to understand to do this work today. One of them we've already gone over in a previous video, and that is the word sum. So just as a reminder, whenever we see the word sum, sum is going to tell us that we need to add. And that is, of course, what we're practicing today, so that makes sense that we are finding the sum. The other word that we have to know today is add end. An add end is any of the numbers that you are adding together. So for example, if we're working with whole numbers, we have 8 plus 3 equals 11. 8 and 3 are the two add ends. They are the numbers we're adding together. Today we're working with fractions. It doesn't change anything. If we have 8 fourths plus 3 fourths equals 11 fourths, 8 fourths and 3 fourths are the add ends because they are the numbers we are adding together. So, in the directions, when you see the word add end, we're not going to be scared of this word. We'll just know that they're talking about the numbers inside the problem that we are adding together. Let's get started. Let's start by cubing our directions. Use a tape diagram to represent each add, on, add end. Decompose one of the tape diagrams to make like units. Then, write the complete number sentence. So the important pieces to look at, let's um, box the important words, the action words that are going to tell us what to do. So we have to decompose, which we have learned is to break down. So we have to break down one tape diagram to make which is something we have to do. We have to make something, and in this case, we have to make like units. And then we're also writing the complete number sentence. So if we look back, oh, and we're using. Oops, I forgot that one. Use. So what are we doing with these action words? We're using a tape diagram to represent each add end. And remember that add end are the two numbers that we're adding together. Those two pieces are called add ends. We're breaking apart the tape diagram to make like units. And then we're writing the number sentence. So those are the things that are important for us to remember as we go about solving this problem. So now we're going to get started. So it says one half plus one fourth. So first it wants us to use a tape diagram. So we need to draw a tape diagram for each one of those add-ins. So I'm going to draw one tape diagram that shows one half. And I'm going to use one tape diagram to show one fourth. And now I have to break apart or decompose one of these diagrams so into, to make it into the other. So I need to think, can I make one half into fourths or can I make one fourth into halves by breaking it down? So in this case, I'd have to break down one half. I could put together pieces in one fourth to make one half, but not break apart. And it tells us to decompose, so I know I have to use one half. So I have to break apart one half to represent one fourth. So I've changed it. So now I know that one half, the equivalent fraction, is two fourths. So, so far I've used my tape diagram to represent each add end. I've broken down or decomposed the tape diagram to make like units, and now I have to write 
a complete number sentence using my new add end, which is right there. So instead of one half, I'm going to write two fourths, because that's the equivalent fraction, plus one fourth. Now that our denominators are the same, remember denominators are our bottom number, these numbers right here, they're the same. All I have to do is add the top. Two plus one is three, and the denominator stays the same. So two fourths plus one fourth equals three fourths. Again, let's start by cubing the directions so that we know what we have to do. It says, estimate to determine if the sum is between zero and one or one and two. Draw a number line to model the addition. Then write a complete number sentence. The first one has been completed for you. We're actually gonna do that together. So, if we look at this problem, what are our action words? First, we have to estimate and then we have to draw, then we have to write. Now what are we doing for each of these? We have to estimate to see if the sum is between zero or one or one and two. And remember that sum always is going to mean we're going to add. Then we have to draw a number line to model the addition, and we have to write a complete number sentence. Okay, so now that we know what we have to do, oh, and you know what, there are numbers in this problem. So we have zero and one, one and two. All right, so will the answer lie between zero and one, or one and two, and we can use estimation to decide. Now the estimation is really going to be in our head. So if we look at this problem, three fourths, I'm going to use my logic and information that we've learned so far to estimate and I'm gonna use my benchmarks just like we've practiced a couple weeks ago. If I think about three fourths in relation to one half, I know if we're working in fourths, halfway would be two fourths. But this problem has three fourths. So I know that three fourths is larger than one half because it's bigger than two fourths. If I look at 5 eighths, I know the halfway mark for 5 eighths is 4 eighths, and this is 5 eighths. So again, this is bigger than 1 half. So if I know that both of these fractions are larger than 1 half, and I'm adding them together, they're going to end up being larger than 1, because 1 half plus 1 half equals 1, and both of these numbers are bigger than 1 half. So I'm going to estimate that this answer is going to be between one whole and two. So I've done my estimation. Then I have to draw a number line to model the addition. I'm going to make one nice long number line using as much of the white space as I can so that I don't have to scrunch my numbers. I already know that my answer is going to be above whole number one. So when I mark my number line, I cannot put one over here because our answer has to be bigger than one. So one has to be in the middle and my endpoints are zero and two. So first I'm gonna mark fourths uh, in between zero and one. There has to be four equal spaces between zero and one and four equal spaces between one and two. There's four, and there's four, and I will go ahead and label one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths, or one whole. One fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths, or, and in this case, two wholes. We've reached our next whole number. So now I have to do eights. Now on our paper, to make it so that it's not messy, I'm going to write my eights on top of the number line, okay? And I know if I'm thinking about between fourths and eights, four times two is eight. So in every space, I'm gonna split it in half, just like this. 
Okay, if, I'm if I have to multiply by 2 to get to 8, then I need two spaces in between each fourth. And now I will label those 8s. I have to hit every single line, red or black, if you're color coding. 1 8, 2 8, 3 8, 4 8, 5 8, 6 8, 7 8, 8 8, or 1 whole. Now we'll know if we made a mistake if 8 eighths does not line up with one whole. And let's keep going. 1 eighths, 2 eighths, 3 eighths, 4 eighths, 5 eighths, 6 eighths, 7 eighths, 8 eighths. And we've gotten to our next whole number, two holes. So now I'm going to start at three-fourths and I'm going to add on five-eighths. So instead of jumping all the black lines, I'm going to jump all the red lines. One, two, three, four, five. So if I look, here's my one hole. Here's where I landed. So let's take a look at these fractions and we're going to write it in eighths. Okay, so when I started at three fourths, that's equivalent to six eighths. That's why we write it above and below the line. It's very easy to see. So, and when I write my number sentence, I have six eighths plus five eighths. And when I count on six, seven, seven eighths. 8 eighths, 9 eighths, 10 eighths, 11 eighths. Or I can just count from 1. 8, 9, 10, 11. And 6 plus 5 equals 11. Now it's greater than 1, so if I would, the directions don't tell us to do this, but I know we all can. 11 eighths as a mixed number would be 1 and 3. Here's where we start shifting into the standard algorithm and getting away from drawing models if we don't need them. Of course, if we do need them, we can use this just as practice, but on scrap piece of paper, draw that model to make sure our answer is correct. First, as always, let's cube. Solve the following addition problem without drawing a model. Show your work. So we have to solve and we have to show. What are we solving? The addition problem without a model. And what are we showing? Our work. So we can't just put an answer. We have to show how we're getting the same denominator. If we do not show that step, the answer is not correct. We will not get points. That's very, very important to know. So, how do we do this without drawing a model? Well, we've already learned it. It's by writing that equivalent fraction sentence or writing our story. So if we look at our denominators, we have eight and four. Now, if we look at these numbers, I'm going to think which number can go into the other one or what is the mul which one is the multiple of the other one. So eight cannot go into four, but Four can go into eight. In fact, if I say my multiples of four, four, eight, 12, eight is on the list. So I am going to make fourths into eights. Now, could I go backwards and use division to change seven eighths into fourths? I could, but I would have to divide by two and seven cannot divide by two. So I'm going to make fourths into eights much, much easier. And I'm going to write our equivalent fraction story. Beginning of the story, middle of the story, end of the story. So we're starting with 3 fourths. We know we want to end up our denominators eighths, and now I'm going to fill in the middle. Our denominators, the number is getting larger, so I know I have to multiply. 4 times 2 is 8. So what you do on the bottom, you have to do on the top. 3 times 2 is 6. 
So instead of thinking of three-fourths, I'm going to think six-eighths. Now I made kind of a mess, so I am going to rewrite the problem at the bottom. Seven-eighths plus six-eighths. Our denominators are the same, so all I have to do is add the top. Seven plus six is 13. The denominator stays the same. Seven-eighths plus six-eighths is 13 eighths. If I want to show off and change this into a mixed number, I certainly can. There is one whole, 13 minus eight is five, and our denominator stays the same. So 13 eighths could be changed to one and five eighths. We showed our work, we solved the problem, but we did not use a, a model. Instead, we showed our work by writing our fraction equivalent sentence.